As you all know, I'm a software engineer, but also a teacher. So I teach students like yourself how to program, how to build applications, how to become well-rounded developers. That's what I do. That sounded like a plug. <sighs> Anyway, so, but the point here is I have a lot going on on my computer from programs that I'm running, building applications that I'm building, recording things for you guys, for my courses. And so there's a lot going on. And needless to say, there's always issues on my desktop, meaning I've got files and folders and everything is tends to be chaotic. I try to manage it pretty well, but it gets chaotic. And so I thought to myself, well, wouldn't that be awesome to create a program that will make it so that anytime I drop, say, a PNG file or PDF file somewhere in a certain place on my computer, it would automatically generate a folder for that file. So if it's a PNG, it generates a folder for PNG files. How cool would that be if it's a text file will generate a folder with that extension of the file. So that's what I end up doing. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. It's very exciting. Okay, let's go ahead and do it. So if I always wanted to have something that allows me to organize my files on my computer, for instance, if I download something to my download folder on my computer, I want to be able to organize those downloads into different folders. So if I download a JPEG extension file, that's going to be added into a folder named JPEGs, something like that. And so all the JPEG files are going to go in that folder. So that can be done in Python easily. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. So I created this project folder or directory and inside I have file organizer, which it's going to be easy for you to find this project. All right. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do here, I'm going to import a few modules. Let's go ahead and import OS. So the OS module allows us to do all sorts of things, right? Basics, low level functions that we can use. All right. And then I'm also going to import this shut util module as well. And this module provides a number of high level operations as well on files and collections on files. So this module is very useful for copying, moving, renaming, and deleting files and directories and so forth. So it's going to be great for what exactly what we want to do, accomplish in this project. Okay, so I'm going to create a function here, define a function, call this organize directory, and I'm going to pass a path. So because I want to be able to organize those directories as explained. So what I will do is I need to go ahead and list all of the directories that I can find. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to say for file in, I'm going to use the OS dot, and I'm going to go ahead and say list directory, right? So this will list all the directories that we'll find in a certain path. So this path here, okay, which we're going to pass like that. All right. So I'm going to loop through these directories in this folder. So if I pass, for instance, something like user bin something, so I'm going to go ahead and look at all of the files inside of this sum directory. So now here, what we'll do is we're going to skip the directory. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to say, if OS and then go to path, because the OS allows us to go to the path and find out. And I'm going to use the is directory, is there. And what I'll do here is I'm going to still go to the path. And then I'm going to say join and pass the path as well as the file. And then I'm going to say continue. Okay, so let's explain what's happening here. If the current item is a directory that we are looping through, we're just going to go ahead and skip all together, right? So the loop will continue to the next item without executing. So just say continue, just continue to the next line. So still inside of our for loop. Now we are going to go ahead and extract file extension and format directory name. Because the idea is once we have a file, something like name.jpg, want to be able to extract, in this case, the name of the file. So if it's name that JPEG, let me go ahead and add here, name that JPEG. 
want to extract just the name and then use that name to create a directory or a folder. All right. So first, let's go ahead and extract the file name. So I'm going to say file name and file extension. So we can actually do this in Python where we assigning two variables all at once. And then I'm going to go and get the OS all got that comes from OS that path. And I'm going to say split text as such. So I'm going to pass the file. So again, that's exactly what we're doing. We're going to get in this case, the file name, like I said, I'll go back here, name that JPEG as an example. So the file name is going to be that. So it's going to be held here. And the extension file extension is going to be held in file extension. So we say OS path and split text and file and pass in the file name that we got. Okay, so now we have name and JPEG, which are held in name, file name and file extension. So now we're going to go ahead and name our directory, right? So I'm going to say directory. I'm going to say it's going to, go to file extension. I'm going to use the file extension. And what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and remove the dot and capitalize it. So what I mean is if we have the file extension, we can, because we're going to use the directory to create a file extension. So we're going to get this JPEG here and we are going to make it all caps. So I'm going to go ahead and say, one colon to remove this dot here and then capitalize it to capitalize it we just say upper very good so we have that now so well we need to create the actual directory before we do that if we don't find actually a directory because sometimes some files may not have an, ext an extension we want to say something like this if not directory right then what we want to do is directory we're going to set that to something that says other like this. All right. Very good. Okay. Now let's go ahead and construct the new directory. So I'm going to say new dir path. I'm going to use OS again, right? This has lower level operating system functions that we can use. And then I'm going to use the path and I'm going to say join. So I can join a path. What paths I'm going to join? Well, I'm going to join the path that we're passing here, as well as the directory as such. So now we're going to have the path, the path that we're getting here, passing along, we're going to join that with this new directory, which we created here. So if we have something like user for a slash directory, right, for the path, we are joining it to the directory name, which in this case could be JPEG like this. Okay, now we have that. Next, what we'll do is we're going to create the directory if it doesn't exist. How do we do that? Well, we're going to use OS again. I can see that the OS is the most important thing here because it allows us to go to that lower level and do things. So I'm going to make directory. So I'm going to use the make dirs okay, function. And then for us to make a directory, we need to pass a few things. First of all, first is the name. So if you go back down here, we need to pass the name of the directory. The name of the directory is going to be this new directory path that we created. And then if exists, I'm going to pass exists OK and pass true. So essentially, we're going to create a directory if it doesn't exist. So we pass exists OK to true like that. OK, next, what we'll do is to we need to move the file into this new directory because at this point here we have directory we have the file we have separated everything so we need to move that new file right into that directory to organize things well we are going to use the shadow module to and then say move look at this how far, how wonderful this is now to move things what are we going to do so we have the source the first thing we pass so i'm going to say sr the source is going to be the string path and destination is going to be also the string path. So that means the source here, we're going to move what? Well, we're going to move the OS that path, we're going to join and we're going to pass the path and file as we did before. Actually, it's different now because now we're passing the file and then we want to move that this source, we want to move that to where? We're going to move that to say DS, DST, we're going to move that to os.path.join 
and then I'm going to pass, in this case, our new directory path and pass that file. So moving the file from its original location, right, to the new location, as you see here, the new dir path. Okay. And to make things better, I'm going to just print here a string that says moved. And then I'm going to put the file and then put something like this, an arrow and put the new direct path like that so that we know that we're moving file file name to this new directory. Now what we'll do, I'm going to put, this is just a method, a function that we created. Now I'm going to create a main function here. So define main, and this is what we're going to call it. So I'm going to say organize directory, and then I'm going to put a path here. So the path could be something like uh, user, this I'm on a Mac, so put yours on your machine. And as a PD is shown, I'm going to go to downloads folder, okay, as such. So the idea is that that is the path that it's needed because whenever we create or want to organize the directory, we need to pass that path. And then it's going to go through, right, look through that path, all the files and so forth. And there we go. So organize directory. Make sure you add the correct path here. At beautiful main as such. All right, so we should be good. Let's go ahead and quickly run this. And okay, so I have my downloads folder. We have I have these two files here: questionnaire and logo SVG, PDF and SVG. So that means if I run my code, it should indeed change things here. So let me perhaps make this smaller like that so we can all see what's going on so there it is so if i run this we should see things happen here okay let's go ahead and see actually let me make sure i am in the right place ls cd to projects to file organizer okay okay let's go ahead and run run so python 3 for me app.py if you run Okay, let's not forget to put forward slash there to actually go inside of that folder directory. All right, let's go ahead and run again. Okay, we ran and you can see that this worked, right? So make sure that of course your directory is correct. And look at that. I can see I have PDF folder that was created. We have this other here. I'm not sure why that happened, but it's okay. Uh, we have the PDF here and SVG. So if we were to add a different kind of, let's say, a TXT file. Okay, so I added, so I added this PY extension file in a JSON. I'm going to go ahead and run again so you can see. Voila, went ahead and created a JSON folder, which and then added that JSON file. We'd still have that others, we'd have the PDF still, and then we have this PY, which is for our book generator, that Pi that I created. Okay, so it's pretty cool. You can see that now we're using something that is actually useful uh, with Python, so we can create something useful as, a C, as you see here. So very simple, but to the point. So make, make sure again that you get the correct path to where your folder is. And one thing you can do, of course, on Mac is that if you have a file such like this, you can right click and then go to get info. And then this will show it's very small, I know. But what do you do here? There is a place that says where you can copy everything all the way to that file. And then that will give you the definite path to that folder. All right. So make sure, of course, to get the correct path there. And just like that, you created a functional, useful script that does something useful. So now, anytime you want to organize your files, you can run this script and it will do the work for you. So I hope you enjoy this tool that we were able to build together and I hope you are seeing the power of Python. So if you're interested in learning more about Python and what can be done with Python, I have a bundle, a huge bundle of a course that takes you from A to hero. I think it's zero to hero, but in any case, so where you can dive in Python, but also learn about 
Django framework, which is indeed a Python framework that allows you to build back end and front end and build amazing scalable web applications. And the reason why I encourage you to actually not just learn the Python language, but also learn the Python as well as a framework is because then you have this connection. So you learning the language, but also building something useful. So if you're interested, check out the links in the description and enroll. Very good. So well, thank you so much for your time. And I hope this was helpful. Again, as always, uh, if you're not subscribed here, go ahead and subscribe and like this video as well as sharing if you find this useful. And please leave a comment. I love to hear from you. I always say this, it makes me really happy when I hear that I'm not just talking to a camera, like a you know, yes. So just say something, even if it's just a thumbs up, some anything I'm looking for friends. <laughs> Thank you so much. And I'll see you next time.